Beam down smoke. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. My name is Nalo and today we're going to be talking about the Saturn Web Operations Panic Sellers and also what you should do with your items in regards to the Panic Sellers. Before we get to that though, let's take a quick look at the sponsor for this video. The sponsor for today's video is BitBot. So BitBot is something you can use on Steam to trade your Arcanas to Bitcoin or Bitcoin to Arcanas, vice versa of course, and it is a very simple bot. All you have to do is go ahead and add the bot and then use its simple commands in order to exchange these two. So if you do use Bitcoin and you want Arcanas, or if you have Arcanas and you want Bitcoin, go check out BitBot. There is a link in the description below to this bot on Steam. All you have to do is check it out. I also want to say that the rates for this bot are actually really good. The $18 is very close to the original value of an Arcana, so that makes the bot a really good one to trade with. Okay, so the first thing to take care of here is to explain what exactly is happening with the Shattered Web item prices and sort of some misconceptions about them and also what panic sellers are doing and why they are doing something temporary. So as many of you may have noticed on the Steam market, those of you that are invested in the Shattered Web operation, a lot of the items haven't been doing a really short-term increase in price. However, this wasn't really expected from the get-go if you watch my other investment videos and if you watch my selling in the Shattered Web Operation video, you'll know that I did of course say that this was not going to be a very short-term explosive jump in prices just when the operation ended. Unfortunately, there were a lot of new players that joined the game via the Shattered Web Operation actually occurring, which meant that a lot of these players were getting into items as well for the first time ever. Because of this, a lot of these players were assuming that these items were going to be extremely short-term, just hype boosts in price and a lot of people were kind of misleading them into thinking that. As a result, these players ended up selling their items very quickly after the operation ended, simply because they didn't see a gigantic jump in prices right when the operation ended itself, so they decided that they didn't make enough money and they wanted to sell off. This is, of course, going to be a very short-term impact, and it's not really something that was super foreseeable, but at the same time, it's something that's short-term and is not going to occur in the future. If you look at previous operations, the same kind of thing happens. People are misled into thinking there's going to be a short-term gigantic jump in prices prices and then they panic sell and they don't make any money. But just keep in mind that the people that are selling the items on each of the marketplaces for the lower values are people that are also not going to make money on the long term when these items actually do rise in price. Now panic sellers do kind of suck because you aren't making a lot of money very quickly, but that's not really how investing works and that's actually a good impact that panic sellers have. They kind of teach people that there is a little bit more to investing than just buying an item and then instantly selling it. There's going to be a period of time that you have to wait for anything to rise in price, that's just how it's worked and that's how it's going to work in the future. Now, Obviously, I don't have a time machine, and a lot of people out there that are investment helpers don't have time machines, so we can't tell you exactly when items are going to lower or rise because we don't know. It's kind of just going to be a thing that you have to base items on different investment factors and then just wait and see what happens. A good thing about these panic sellers is that we're now able to just grab the investments that we bought, throw them into storage units, and then kind of forget about them until it's time to sell. For those of you that are still holding strong and want to make more money on these operation investments, well, here's a few tips for you. For starters, keep in mind that the gold web foil is is in a really good position. This is a sticker that not only looks extremely good, but also has a really good application onto weapons. If you compare it to something like the Clone 2016 stickers, those are items that look a little bit smaller when applied to the weapon themselves, but the gold web foils have a good size when applied to the weapon and also give it a good look. This means that this is an item that is going to be pretty popular to apply to other weapons simply because it looks good in game, and it also actually has a pretty good scratch pattern, which means that people are going to probably buy a little bit more of these than usual for application purposes simply because they might scratch the item too much or they might not scratch it enough and they want to kind of get the item correct that they are going for. Another factor that I haven't really talked too much about for the gold web foil is the fact that it is a gold foil which means that it does share a interesting niche with a few other stickers in the game such as the crown foil or the dragon lore foil which is where they have the gold coloring and also the foil shine. Gold foils are very popular foils to apply to weapons and that kind of makes this in a really good position to be an application based sticker one that is bought to be applied. Now obviously Obviously, at the end of the operation, there is going to be a decrease of hype, especially because there was a new case release, so a lot of the focus has shifted away from the operation and towards the new case and also towards new prospects for CSGO's future, which means that some of the hype that was driving the prices up that was happening during the Shattered Web operation is no longer happening in full swing. However, that's actually a good thing. For starters, with the hype focusing away from the operation items, this means that it's going to give panic sellers an opportunity to bring the prices down a little bit into an area where more people are able to invest into the items. This means that a lot of the items that were in the panic seller's hands are going to change hands into people 
people's hands that actually want to hold the items for a longer time and want to make more money off of. This means that people who are interested in making money off the items in terms of investing are going to be able to buy the items and hold on to them for a while and it's going to mean that more people owning these operation items are people that actually want to make money off of them which is a good thing. It's going to make the items a lot more of an investor friendly thing and it's going to be something that people can kind of on a micro level at least kind of adjust the market in their favor. Now if you bought these items at a peak price for example the Emerald Jormungandr I believe went up to around $100 naturally at one point. If you did buy at these peak prices then don't be afraid of you losing value off of the item itself because now is only really a good time to buy even more of the items. Now clearly these items are going to have a little bit of a hype focus problem which is going to cause their prices to not exactly skyrocket right at the current moments. But as I said in my previous selling video for these items, especially with the Emerald Jormungandr, there are going to be snowball items, which basically just have to wait for one big increase in price and then it'll kind of just snowball from there. I agree with everybody that panic sellers are annoying and they do kind of mess up the general flow of investing, but it does give people a good chance to get a better idea of how investing works and it gives them a chance to look towards new prospects while they kind of throw these into a storage unit and just wait. With enough time and patience, these items are going to do very well as they shift away from the panic seller's hands and into the hands of people that are interested in using the items as either play skins or as crafting the items which make them an even more permanent play skin, or the alternative of course which is investors hands which actually just want to make money off the items and aren't going to sell them and are instead going to hold them. I do also want to go ahead and target one misconception I've heard recently about these items and that's that they were over invested into which is the cause for their price decreasing. This is actually not true. What they were invested into too much of was with panic sellers. There are still people who bought the items that are genuinely interested in making money off them and understand that panic sellers are a factor that they're going to have to wait towards. So even though these people invested in them at a high rate, which would technically qualify as over investing, these people are actually a good reason for the item increasing in price because they're not going to sell at low prices. To help flesh out this idea a little bit more, think about it this way. If someone was to offer you an apple and was going to tell you that that apple was going to turn into a golden apple if you were to hold on to the apple for two weeks for example, then obviously you're going to hold on to that apple because you know it's going to turn into a golden apple in two weeks. If you sold the apple or ate it or got rid of that apple in any way, shape, or form, you want to be able to have that golden apple, which is clearly way more valuable. This is the same way that investors' minds work when they buy into things. They know that the item is going to bring them profits if they hold on to them for long enough, so they're going to hold on to them rather than selling them too early. Now, obviously, with this video, I'm not trying to give you guys false hope. Again, like I said, I don't have a time machine. I don't know what prices look like in the future. I'm just simply basing this off of factors that I've personally experienced over my years of investing, and also off of factors that I know are good factors for items increasing in price. Clearly we don't know what Valve is going to do in the future, we don't know how recent some of these weapon changes might be or how recent some of these other changes might be to the game as a whole, so obviously we don't know what's going to occur in the future with these prices, they could even decrease. But the reason I'm making this video is simply to outline a lot of the misconceptions and factors and kind of talk about how selling should work for these items if you are interested in making money off of them and aren't interested in being a panic seller. One thing that I do want to bring up as well before this video closes off is also to consider the fact that the source code leak did have a pretty major impact on prices. For example, Shattered Web cases were actually doing really well and they were actually making their way to around $1.20 per case. And then once the after the source code leak happened, they went back down to around their normal price of around 98 cents to a dollar, which meant that they did lose a little bit of their value simply because people were panicking and selling just because of the source code problem. I think one problem with a lot of new players joining the item scene is that a lot of them aren't experienced enough in the item scene to realize what good investments actually look like and they don't really have the patience that they need in order to keep the money actually rolling. Another issue obviously is a lot of people being pretty susceptible to rumors. I've realized that a lot of them are pretty susceptible to rumors, especially with, for example, the CS20 case. A lot of people said that the CS20 case was going to be discontinued because of a general rumor. There was absolutely no confirmation from Valve whatsoever, and so a lot of people decided to buy into CS20 capsules, for example, which by now have only gone down in price. I think to sum up this whole thing, basically the whole issue here is there's a lot of people out there that are too susceptible to rumors and are too susceptible to changes happening in the market as a whole for CSGO to be good investors because they don't realize that it takes a lot of patience and time to actually make money off their investments. As I've been saying for a long time, you should really only trust what Valve has exactly confirmed onto things and you shouldn't trust just complete general rumors that people are making up about things because that's not going to get you anywhere and it's only going to make you paranoid. This is actually why I do recommend investing only a small percentage of your inventory in 
into actual investments because it means that you can throw that small percentage into a storage unit, for example, and just hold on to it without a care in the world. I have talked to people recently who have decided to kind of all in on specific investments and items, and this is never a good idea. It just is going to be a way for you to put too much risk into something and then be too concerned about it and not actually ever make end up making money. Generally, if you're actively thinking about investments that you've made more than like three times a week, then you probably have an issue with paranoia and you probably over invested into something. But to kind of conclude this video, as time goes on and more of these items leave the hands of panic sellers and go into investors' hands, I think the future is really bright for these Shattered Web Operation items. As we can see with the previous collections that came out during Operation Hydra, these items are doing really, really well, especially the Og Akihabara Except, for example, which has gained a lot of value recently as well. So I think they, we are on a very good track to make some good money off these items here, so just hold strong on them and you can make some good money if you don't think about it too much. Anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I hope these tips helped some of you out there that may be a little bit more paranoid about these items. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave me a like below and of course consider subscribing to the channel for the latest and greatest investment tips anywhere else on YouTube. As well, also check out BitBot, they're a great sponsor to go check out and they do have a very easy to use service that you can get Bitcoin or Arcanas from. And I will see you all next time. Make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter and Reddit in the description below. And stay safe out there. Peace.